Oh, hi there. Has this ever happened to you? You're doing a stream and you know, you're doing stuff on your desktop and your chat's like, hey, um, what, what program are you using? What software is that? What, what app is that? They ever, you ever get that question? Yeah, a lot of people do. Um, if you're like a game dev or coding stream or you do art streams or animation, that kind of stuff, anybody who's showing off their desktop, everybody gets asked this all the damn time. What program are you using? What app is that? So I made you a tool and it answers that question so you can stop talking, so you can keep focused on what you're talking about in conversation to your stream, to your chat, uh, without getting distracted by answering that common question. So here it is, it's called What App Is That? right there. And as I click on different windows, it'll actually show you what's in focus. Pretty cool. Um, it also, if I hover over it, it's got this little transparent window it has a little bounding box that you can see, and it's got this little grabber bar. So I'm gonna grab that and just move it on over here out of my way. Um, and now I can do my stream and I can jump between stuff and I can be focusing on to, you know, talking to chat, telling funny stories, you know, letting them see my folder of uh, pictures of cats eating cheeseburgers. And it will say in the bottom corner that I'm in Explorer or I'm in Command Prompt or what do you, what do you mean? No, that's, no, this is normal. Lots of people, Look, it's not important. Like, oh, look, now it says Photoshop. Okay, cool. Right, you know what I mean. You're normal. Um, so I know what you're thinking at this point. Great, that's exactly what I need. Can I customize it? Because I don't want green leaves. And I'm like, I got you, sure. So if I hover over it, there's this little gear icon. I click on that. Boom, we have a ton of options, so many options. Uh, we got these global options like always on top and system tray, which will put it down here in the system tray. Um, if we jump over to text, then we can change things like the font weight. You know, do you want it bold or skinny or what do you want it to look like? Um, the text position, how high up on down on the screen do you want it? Um, the font size, all that stuff. And it updates in real time. Um, it's got text shadows. You can switch it to white or black or none, depending on what your background is. And that's right. We got a background, so you can change our backgrounds and stuff. Uh, it has this cool little leafy background, some fun spikes. We got cute little bubbles. Uh, you can also pick your own stuff. Uh, so I'll just pick something here and look at that. You can even set it to an animated GIF. Isn't that neat? Uh, and this little bounding box that's around it is what's controlling the background size there. So if I adjust this and make it tall, if you have a tall background you want to use, you can do that and your stuff will fit in there. Um, it'll just squeeze into wherever you set it to. Um, you see this text right here, it says currently in focus. If you want to change that, it's under the message section. You can say, you know, what program is this or whatever to let people know in your chat what this program is doing. Um, you can also just backspace that out of there entirely if you don't want it at all. Similarly, you can backspace out of this. There's a little X right here. If you don't want a background at all, it'll just be the text and the, um, the drop shadow that you chose. Uh, but if you do pick a background, you've got all these fun background options. So you can bump up the brightness, change the color to whatever you want, you know, that kind of stuff, adjust the contrast on it, uh, the saturation, all those fun things. And you get some pretty cool things, pretty cool backgrounds. Uh, you can also pick whatever font you want that's installed in the computer. So I'll just pick one that I have installed. I think that one looks pretty cool. And now what was just some green leaves, now it kind of looks a little dope, honestly. I kind of like that. Um, yeah, so these are all your different aesthetic settings. We also have aliases. So this is, for example, I've got a program here that's a calculator. And when I open this program, it shows up as calc1. And maybe I don't want it to say calc1, I want it to say something else. So under aliases, I can come in here, hit add another, type in calc1, because that's the name for it. And then I'm gonna put in whatever I want, cool calculator. And when I click on it now, it says, oh, did I spell that wrong? I did calc1, there we go. And now when I click on it, it'll say whatever I want it to. Cool. If there's stuff in here you don't like, you don't like the aliases that it ships with out of the box, you can just remove them. If you want them back later, you can just scroll down here and hit um, load defaults and it'll just add back in just the ones you removed. You know, you can sort and stuff. You know how things work, whatever. All right, you get it. Cool. So that's the gist of it. That's the quick uh, point of it. Um, you can also change how often it updates what's in focus. By default, I have it set it to um, every half second, but you can set it to 
you know, every two seconds or whatever. And um, that can be useful if you wanted to like copy text out of here, you could set it to 15 seconds. Um, and then when I click on this, it's gonna wait 15 seconds and it will show up and I can copy that text and then add it to the alias or whatever. You get the idea. Cool. Um, some of you may be looking at this and saying, awesome, I like it, but I wish it could be integrated into my streaming software, into OBS or Streamlabs. And don't worry, I got you advanced users too. So for you guys, what you're gonna do is go to uh, your global options here, make sure system tray is turned on, change your uh, closing app to sins to tray uh, and then set up the output to file. So I'm gonna set this to my desktop and it's going to output a file to my desktop called whatappisdat.txt. You can put this anywhere in your computer, it doesn't have to be your desktop. Um, and it's down here. And let's say I've got um, this calculator in focus. When I open this up, oh, I did it, I did it too quickly. Whatever, it shows you whatever's in focus. That's the point, right? Now it says the calculator. There it is, calculator, cool. So uh, every half second, because that's what I have this set to here, it's gonna update what's in focus in this thing. And it's also going to update the text in this file and change it to whatever's in focus. So that means that I can hide all of this because I have it set to system tray and sends to tray. That means when I hit this X, it'll actually just hide it down here in the system tray. And then I can go over to OBS, which I'll show you here. Oh no, recursion. Uh, in OBS, in your sources panel, you can add a text GDI source. I'm gonna call it what app is that? Hit okay. And then this little checkbox is read from file. That's the secret sauce. We're gonna click on read from file, browse, make sure you find wherever you put that text file at, wherever you told it to be stored, click on it. And now, as I'm clicking around, whatever's in focus will actually show up here in OBS. I can adjust all the styles for this font and color and all that here in OBS, hit OK. I can move it around in OBS, do whatever I want with it, um, and it will be updated. You know, as I'm clicking around on different stuff, it'll show up there. Now, if I pop this back up here, you'll notice that as I switch between programs, there's a bit of a lag. So like um, the, the window here will update and then a moment later it'll update in OBS. Uh, and there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, it is updating every half second this text file and OBS will be updating it in its app. It'll be checking that text file every like one to three seconds. Um, nothing I can do about that. There's always gonna be a little bit of a lag or delay there. Same thing with Streamlabs. Uh, it works exactly the same way in Streamlabs. You add a, a source for a text read from file. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're not jumping around between programs a lot, if you're just like, if you're not like constantly hopping between stuff every second, uh, then that little delay in the window in OBS is probably fine and not a big deal. But that means now it's there in OBS, it is a source uh, in your scene, you can add in another source for a background image or a video or whatever you want and you can make that integrate it into the layout that you use for your stream. And when you switch between different scenes, you can have transitions, you can animate that around uh, in, in your layers and you have all of that advanced control available to you. But I will say this, I'm gonna go and remove this from here because honestly, I'm gonna put this back. I actually like it being here on the desktop um, I find this actually more useful because when I'm in a program and I'm talking to my chat, uh, I don't I can't see what's underneath this and neither can they. So if I want to access what's underneath it, I have to move it out of the way and then do whatever I was doing and my chat can still see what I'm doing. My viewers can see what I'm up to and then when I'm done, I can just move it back. So I actually kind of like it being here because it's more obvious what it's blocking and I can move it around and I can, you know, um, resize it and adjust it to whatever, whatever I need in the moment. I have that, that flexibility, um, and like shrink it down a little bit more if it's, if it's in the way of stuff. Um, you know, if the text is a little bit too large, I can pop it up and go to my text and just be like, all right, let's, uh, shrink this down a little bit more. Uh, and then I can shrink the window a little bit more or whatever, um, adjust the height. Cool all that stuff on the fly. Um, that's kind of what I like out of it. So if you're watching this and you're like, cool, I'm sold, I'm in, I want it. How do I get it? The link is in the description. Um, 
It is completely free. This is an open source project. You can look at every line of source code. Most of it was written, streamed on Twitch. Um, it doesn't cost anything. If you want, you can go to my Twitch and you can donate to me. It's in the about section. But honestly, I would be happier if in the about section on your Twitch page, you just gave this a shout out. You you linked to this the website for it. Um, you told people about it on Twitter or in chat when people ask you, hey, how are you doing that? Knowing which program is in focus, how is that working? Telling people about it because this video and the website I made is the extent of the marketing that this project is getting. It's free, there's no marketing behind this. So it's purely word of mouth. Um, so if you could tell people about it, that would be really cool. Um, I wanna give a shout out to Adam Phillips, AKA Clyde, creator of Bitey of Brackenwood. Uh, he is also a streamer on Twitch. He's a, um, an animator and uh, he did the artwork for the leaf and the spiky background images. And he has been using this software um, in on his stream for a year. He's been my beta tester. Uh, he's used it for every stream for a year now, loves it. So big shout out to him. He's been a, a great motivation on working on this project. And that's it. Go to the description if you want to download it. Again, completely free. Oh, and I mentioned it also works on Linux and OS X. Oh my god! All right, so I'm going to go ahead and slide right out of here just like I slid in. And it's going a lot slower this time. Okay. All right, all right. And I'm almost gone. And goodbye. Oh, I'm back.